<laughs> okay, we're recording now. Okay, okay, guys, welcome, welcome. Uh, this is Samantha Studebaker Carl coming at you from beautiful Indianapolis, Indiana, and I'm here with my good friends Catherine, Christina, Dan, Marjorie, and Karen. And today we're talking about the Tao Te Ching, verse 66, and um, change your thoughts, change your life, living the wisdom of the Tao by Wayne Dyer's chapter 66 that goes along with that verse. Um, but before we get going, I just want to um, say welcome to everybody. And below this video, if you're watching it as a recording, you'll find a link to get into our Facebook group. Be, be sure and jump over there because we kind of participate with each other throughout the week over there and we post the replays and all that kind of thing there as well. Also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video and share it with anybody that you would like or that you think would like it. So with that, um, okay, everybody jump out, introduce yourselves and then we'll get this discussion going. Hi, it's Catherine in Boulder, Colorado and thrilled to see Miss Christina back on or back with us. It's been a while and um love that you're back marjorie of course our regulars uh we love everybody it's a little bit rainy here i'm glad i've got some leftover curried lentils from yesterday and it's going to be a great day this is a beautiful verse hey, good morning everybody christina Irvin here in northeast tennessee and it's good to be on this morning good to see you Catherine. i like the I like the background you got there. I haven't seen it before. I, I'm sure you've had it on for a while and I just haven't seen it, but um, it's good to be back. Uh, Dan Sissick in Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, where it's a little after 7 a.m., so I'm still trying to, try to wake up. Um, but glad as always to be here and looking forward to the discussion. Well, speaking of trying to wake up, it's a little after seven here too. And that's because we're on regular time and the whole damn country screws us up when they go on to whatever time it is. Um, but I've been up since three or so. And so if you hear a big snore, this is what you have to do. Everybody has to unmute and as loudly as you can say my name so that I wake up. <laughs> Uh, this is Karen Loha from Phoenix, uh, Chandler, uh, Arizona, and um, it is so great to have you back with us, Chris, Christina, and glad to have a man on here, Dan. <laughs> looked like we were going to be a little hen party this morning. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Did you want to jump out there and uh, Marjorie, just introduce yourself real quick? I'm sorry, I lost <laughs> track. I had to check the participants on the last one. Good morning, I'm, I'm in the East Coast. I stayed up pretty late last night. So uh, did, so I'm, I'm awake, but off camera, but I'm glad to be back. And um, it's Saturday morning, so something to be grateful for. A weekend thank you all right awesome welcome everybody glad to have you all here um, who would like to read our verse for us this morning <clears throat> I can uh, okay oh is Karen coming out come on Karen mm -hmm. you, you do it better than I do I don't know where you get that idea. I can't even imagine what you could possibly be thinking, but I'll be happy to read it. Um, I'll try and remember to read it in English since I don't know any other language well enough. <laughs> this is uh, the Data Chang uh, verse 66. Why is the sea king of a hundred streams? Because it lies below them. Humility gives it its power. Therefore, those desiring a position above others must speak humbly. Those desiring to lead must follow. Thus it is that when a sage stands above the people, they do not feel the heaviness of his weight. And when he stands in front of the people, they do not feel hurt. 
The sage stays low, so the w world never tires of exalting him. He remains a servant, so the world never tires of making him its king. Thank you, Karen. This is such a great verse, isn't it? It's, it's such a good reminder. And, you know, and the, I find it interesting because there's so many different, you know, television, movies, and that sort of things that they, they try and teach this lesson, which is really interesting that TV actually teaches something that is <laughs> valuable. But um, it does every now and then. And, the, and this is kind of one of those things that I feel like it does teach us. Uh, we were watching a replay of, um, I don't know, one of the episodes of Game of Thrones just recently. And one of the things that uh, one of the leaders said to one of his, um, I don't know, minions, I'll just call them minions. <laughs> one of his minions was, if you want to be a leader, you first need to learn how to follow. And, um, you know, and he was all full of himself. He was young and he was excitable, you know, and he's all ready to go to war and take everybody with him. And, and, his, um, and his teacher was like, look, you know, you got to slow your roll. You got to calm yourself down. You got to pay attention to the bigger picture and see everything else that's going on and see the perspective from everybody else's everybody else as well first before you can take an action that is going to be a a good leader taking an action you know and so we've got to pay attention to all those other things before we can expect to have any idea what it means to be a leader and i think that that is super important even you know in in our lives as well you know when we're when we're in a work situation and you know we think we know everything but Yet, when we kind of look at the whole big picture, we can get a better understanding. And, and I think that's kind of what it's trying to tell us here is that we need to not just assume we know everything and allow for all the knowledge to flow to us before we can take an action that makes sense or that so we can take control and <laughs> make a difference. Because if you just go out there with the attitude of, just being the leader, then uh, you're probably just going to get, you know, eggs thrown in your face, so, <laughs> so to speak. Maybe not literally, but figuratively. Anyway, okay, who's, who else has a thought? Well, just on a light, funny note, the first thing I thought of when it talked about all the tributaries, and if you think about it, you know, all the rivers and streams and that flow into the ocean, I thought, wow, it sounds like a pyramid scheme. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I guess I'll jump out. Yeah now that I'm getting more awake. Um, um, I think for me, the, kind of what gets brought out of this is that, you know, a lot of the impactful leaders that I've read about or heard about or, you know, uh, that I want to be like are leaders that have been servants or who have been, you know, used their humility as their way of leading and powerfully leading and getting people to do a lot of, you know, what people were wanting to have to be led with, you know, because a lot of times when you get, you know, somebody out there that's, you know, you know, case in point, you know, North Korea right now, you know, we have somebody there that's kind of just kind of, you know, and so in that sense, you know, that's how, you, I think you get more respect and more um, people willing to do things and more can get done. And I think, you know, with that, it, you know, and it says a lot about the person because they'd rather elevate others above themselves. And they know they fully are aware of where they're at in their position and how people view them, but they don't necessarily let that ego seek in and take over and, you know, make it about them.
I was thinking, I wonder if the president of the United States or even like the governors, you know, like the politicians, I wonder if before they vote on a bill or even start one or whatever, you know, if they were to put themselves in, say, 300 different people's shoes, you know, and how that decision would affect that person and their set of circumstances. I, 300 is a random number, but, you know, I just wonder if they ever, and then when I thought that thought, I thought, well, do, do you do that when you make a decision that could affect your team? And I have to say, um, I have not put myself into each individual's position and looked at it from their standpoint. But that's something that I will be doing going forward. Maybe not 300, but, <laughs> you know, it's a, it brings out a really good point. Um, when, you're, when you make decisions that affect other people, you know, do you really consider everybody enough before you do that so great reminder and i love that we got this first on earth day so happy earth day everybody yeah happy earth day and i wanted to mention to christina your setting is different because you're able to sit up you'll have to share your little a uh, special thing with that w w with her it's cool yeah um, I'm really glad we're going over this you know I think the idea of reflecting on when we make decisions who do they affect and how do they affect is is a really good thing to keep in mind gosh even as just in the role of a parent and one child uh, I think a lot of times the whole problem is that, well, let me just kind of share the picture I got about um, when Sam was talking about the young man all jazzed and excited and, you know, ready to leap in there. Um, you know, thinking about children in grade school getting ready to do a play and you know, maybe there's a king in the play. Well, everybody wants to be the king until they realize, you know, if you take this idea of the, the rivers all flowing into the ocean and, <clears throat> you know, being humble and being in, a, in an entirely upside down position from what you thought you would be if you took that role of a king, um, I mean, really, how, how good is this that we speak, <laughs> poor Chris, whenever he's not here, I always get to throw in that we're on national TV, um, <laughs> you know, and in perpetuity, here we are sharing our, our, our best uh, thoughts in front of, we have no idea who, I, I mean, the, you know, the Korean uh, dictator or whatever he is um you know could be watching <laughs> i'm sure he is <laughs> but uh but how handy it is to be talking about these things and throwing in from so many different angles how it looks to us that's my thoughts Awesome. Thank you, Karen. Welcome, Jason. We see you passing by the camera. <laughs> Glad to have you. Uh, that's a good, I like that perspective. Um, when you first mention kids, that always comes, it's, it's always something that, um, you know, holds true with me is with kids because I have two kids. And now I have two grandchildren and, and, you know, when, when my kids were growing up, that was kind of a big thing is I was trying not to just be a dictator, not just be ordering them around just because I said so. I hated that when I was a kid. I hated hearing just because I said so, you know, and, you know, so it was important to me to bring them into the decision making process rather than just telling them what to do and how to do it and also kind of taking responsibility for 
why I wanted to make one decision or another and bringing them into that side of it too because I think a lot of times as parents we just flat don't want to do something for whatever reason and we don't tell our kids why we just say no you can't because I said so <laughs> you know and I tried not to be that way I tried to be more like you know okay no um you know, I really, I've worked all day. I've had a long day. I really don't feel like driving halfway across the county and taking you over to school so that you can spend 10 minutes and then come right back home. So, you know, if you can find another way to get there, then sure you can go, you know? So, um, but that was, it was kind of one of those things where I think that when we take other people into consideration, then they feel like they have more power in the, in the, in the relationship, which is um, is huge, I think. I mean, it's like um, this job that I've been working, and we have a, a manager uh, for our store. And <clears throat> you know, I've worked in a number of places where there's you know somebody who's in, in in charge. Obviously, in some situations, they just give orders; they don't care, and you just have to either roll with it or quit, one or the other. And in this particular place that I'm working, our manager isn't like that. She comes around on a weekly basis and asks for our input and checks in with us to see how things, how we think things are going. And then we see things change because of that. And I feel like that's, um, that's a powerful way to be a leader is to not just be dictating, but to also be gathering information and sharing and asking people's opinions and then making decisions and then i think you have a happier group of followers that way welcome chris good to see you on again you know we got a bunch of folks on here today awesome awesome cool thanks hi hello hey yeah good to see you again jason hey yeah good good morning great to see you all great to be here this this weekend uh, yeah I can't agree with you more Samantha that's uh, it, with everything you're saying there I think when people have their uh, have their own input it definitely empowers them it was, that was great yeah good to be here good to see you Dan good to see you Catherine Christina hi Marjorie hey Karen yeah looking forward to a good discussion discussion <laughs> well there are those times where I, I mean i i did the same thing samantha i you know kind of told my kids my thought processes when i could i mean but there are times when you need to say no and they need to just obey i know that sounds like a strong word <laughs> but Sometimes it's a dangerous situation and you just need to be able to give an order and have those kids obey. And I have seen the situation arise where the kid now expects a 15 minute explanation about why you're saying no, you know, when you just need them to like do exactly what you're saying at the moment. And uh, so I, again, you know, I think we find balance in all this, but I'm really glad because back when I was coming up, I mean, we didn't get explanations about anything. So <laughs> I'm glad that, yeah, I think you can go, you know, you, you have to have that balance, but I'm glad that we're treating children, respecting children's uh, ability to think and understand adult concepts better than we think they can. And sometimes they still, you know, there's, there's an emotional maturity that only comes with age and experience and things like that. But, um, for the most part, kids are just amazing, like what they can learn. And I, I'm always watching these videos where these little like three and four year old prodigies are playing the violin or something, you know, and sometimes I have sort of mixed feelings about that too. If the kid really loves it, it's awesome. If they're being forced into it, then I'm not so happy about it. <laughs> and to be that good, I have to wonder. Uh, but some kids, I know, they just love whatever it is, you know, that instrument. They just, they live to play that. I think they must just be a reincarnated somebody, you know, that played all their life or something. But even as a parent, I guess a parent is the first leadership position that we take in life. 
you know, I took it really young at 16. Well, I turned 17 just before I gave birth, but I didn't know how to lead. You know, babies do not come with instruction booklets. And um, people think that it, it, and there is a lot of like natural instinct that kind of kicks in, but not for some things. You know? <laughs> It doesn't cover everything. That covers like the basic survival stuff, all the other stuff. Um, it's it's such an important thing to think about your parenting, how you want to parent, I think, instead of just repeating how you were parented, because obviously we needed progression. So I'm glad that we're getting it. And um, And I think the kids that are coming up now, the kids that are going to be leading the world in the future, this is an amazing uh, generation of children coming in, like genius type abilities in ways. I don't know exactly what's happening. I have theories on it and I've heard theories on it that I won't go into, but um, I hope that our politicians in the future do take into consideration how their decisions affect each person you know, and the planet, and not just by who's filling up their wallet. Yeah, I was going to... Oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. I was going to jump out and say, I think for me, um, I think because of some of the things I grew up with and experiences I personally experienced, I do a lot of times, not all the time, and there are times where I just say, no, I need this done, or, you know, with whoever I'm dealing with. But I think a lot of times I do take that extra minute and think of how things I say or do will affect other people because I know so well personally the effects of choices and things like my real mom and stepdad did to me when I was growing up. And, you know, the outcome that came out of that, you know, um, the abuse and stuff and things like that, it really puts me, I'm very empathetic and very thoughtful and and I kind of and I've been told this a, you know, a lot of times um, by a couple of people is that I tend to be too nice sometimes and I think of other people a little too much which I don't think is too bad you know um, but you know I really think that you know but that's helped me get to where I am and you know and why you know I have the friends I have the people I have I don't have a huge ton of them but the ones I have, you know, there's really something there. And I think that's part of, you know, what it is. And so um, I think it helps. And I do like to explain why I made certain decisions. So they fully understand that it's not just that I'm trying to be mean or this or be that way. I really thought about it, you know, and things like that. Um, and I think if people really did that, you know, take that extra minute to just stop thinking, go, okay, if I say this or if I do that, you know, how is it going to play out? And just run a little thing in your head really quick and say, okay, it can maybe go this way or that way. Which way do I want it to go? Well, I really want it to go that way. So let me lead it off with going that way first myself, and then that way it gives the opportunity. And I don't think enough people shut their mouths enough and listen so they can have the opportunity to do that before they open their mouth and engage their brain. Oh, yeah, good stuff, Dan. I, I, you know me, I get to read these, these verses and it, it's liable to go anywhere. <laughs> so I think for me, the thing that came up was, well, it's kind of two things and it sort of ties back into what you guys were saying about parenting, I think, but, um, the old adage about got to be able to be a follower before you can be a leader. Um, and the best leaders were great followers. And um, also, I lost my train of thought. Um, why? Because another thought came to my mind. Um, um, but also those who lead the best leaders are actually more of servants. And it's not about them as the leader. It's not about the spotlight being on them, but it's about whatever, whatever the troop or whatever the cause that they're, leading it's about that they they focus on shining the spotlight on that and as a parent um i'm trying to think you know i'm 
I was raised by the old school parents too. So I didn't do too much asking because I realized that that was, you know, probably life threatening. If I did. <laughs> so I didn't do too much asking. But what I will say is that um, as I got older and, and as an adult myself, I recognized that the parenting style where I don't feel the need to ask because your leadership is so clear all of the time that I can give the benefit of the doubt that it's for my best. And later on, we'll have a discussion, a discussion about it. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's what came up in my mind. I think that's a good point, Christina. And, and I feel like that with my kids, I, you know, they, they kind of felt that way too, because there were times like what Catherine said, where it was just, you know, there was a split section, a split second decision had to be made. And, um, you know, we made it and then, you know, we can of course talk about it later, but, um, but yeah, there are those times where you have to, you've got to make those decisions and you have to have, you have that expectation that your kids are going to follow along because you've said so, you know, without having to say, because I said so. <laughs> so I get it. Yeah. I, I remember the other thought that came to my mind, um, Catherine, too. Um, I personally don't think, like, I think our biggest problems with our, our politicians is us, the people who keep voting for them or those who um, keep not voting for whatever jaded reasons or those who, you know, like we keep picking, picking these people who don't care. So for the first time in a couple of years, I'm excited about this millennial generation because as a minority person myself, I'm excited that they're coming up because they don't really care. They, they are more diverse and they are more inclusive and they are um, more um, service centric and they are more appreciative of our earth. And they're very appreciative of um, not only God, but the, the, the existence of God giving us science. So all of these things actually makes me excited about this millennial generation. I do think that, um, you know, they will be a different kind of fresh air to our political environment for sure. Yeah, because some of these kids are building like systems that are cleaning the ocean, getting the plastic out of the ocean. And they're, I mean, they're inventing just, they're like, um, oh gosh, I can't, Tesla. You know, they're just like coming up with these inventions that are going to save the world. I, it's really exciting to watch if you can stay focused on the good stuff and not look at the bad. <laughs> I think that those, I think that those, the younger leaders will be less tempted to be, to be or, and or become, um, trying to be mindful of current situation, less tyrant authoritarian like, I think they will all, they will, they will probably ap approach things with a more um, communal um, partnership kind of perspective. I'm hoping anyway, I'm praying. <laughs> uh, it's, it's Marjorie, good morning. I try and share now. Still making my coffee, but uh, the verse, the verse was really interesting for me because it made me think about the, well, you know, it has some key words here that sometimes that helps me get started, like the word humility, um, servant, humbly. And I guess basically I was thinking about the fact that a leader is really getting their power from those who are giving their, them the power, meaning their followers. So in that sense, I think of the thought of people who are able to do uh, healing work, for example. And they humbly say, it's, it's really not me, me individual healer here. It's really coming through a higher source, you know, if you wanna call that God or creator. That's what I'm thinking about when I was reading this. And because that's, they really are, they really are giving you 
your you their power giving you the power um these followers are giving you the power because if they didn't want to give you the power well you're not going to be a leader so you know whether you want to tr want to be you really have to try hard dictate whatever if they're not going to give you the power then you're, you're truly not going to be their leader and the other thought that came to mind for me was the idea of if if this is what we're what we're envisioning um then we it's really the concept that we are one we are one we're all interconnected no one is higher than the other no one is lower we're, we're all interconnected we're all on the same plane um i think of the morphic field uh we are one not just being um intelligent beings but everything the earth you know our universe etc so that's what came to mind for me because i recently had an experience um on a on a business level where the so-called leader <laughs> showed his true colors and ever since i really just don't trust him i basically just listen um i have to take into consideration his true <laughs> nature his weaknesses and where he's coming from and it it kind of you know i don't feel inspired i feel more like uh i'm i'm more mature and and it makes me feel less trusting and the this particular leader uses sarc sarcasm and humor and i find that that doesn't really help to lead that sets a tone of of um uncertainty within myself as far as true support and leadership and i don't i don't feel like i need sarcasm or humor so it's just an example but it was a very powerful example for me because i'm actually living it and it's not anything you know intense or anything <laughs> I, I take it in stride i see the person the so-called leader for where he's coming from and still appreciate all the work he's doing to lead because it is a lot of work but i i really don't resonate with his style so i hope that helps i mean i like to think of things on a more cosmic plane because i am a parent and i worked in the school system for 10 years so i know elementary age kids <laughs> and uh but on a higher level I, lo I love the idea of we are one and our power really comes from each other or and from a higher source and it is a huge responsibility and it's something to be respected and um and i think that if you are a follower first and know what that means then you truly are able to put yourself in other people's shoes and can appreciate what a team really needs you know they they need you to be a certain way and and not to you know i i guess it should inspire you as a leader to be to be even better than you think you can be so anyway thanks for letting me share i have a question for you marjorie did you share with that leader that sarcasm and humor are not helpful to you if you haven't i suggest you do because i had the same thing happen with me um, with somebody that i was working with and i had basically tried about 15 ways of getting through to this person and i finally was just frustrated and i got sarcastic and humorous and and he let me know how unhelpful that was and it really made me realize what i was doing so there seem to be certain personality colors that do not accept sarcasm <laughs> or humor well at all so it kind of depends on some people you can actually motivate not sarcasm but with for me uh, you know um well even when i was in, in the school system i i learned because sometimes i try to use it myself that's the humor and i wasn't being sarcastic but probably was sarcastic humor you know with young kids it just doesn't work you know uh, they don't, don't even get the humor and maybe all they really get is the sarcasm sarcastic intent behind it which really was not my first intent but obviously there was that that bit in there so i appreciate what you're saying i um 
I think it's the work of being a leader. It's a lot of work and sometimes the repetitiveness of it, as we all know, as we try to lead people or to share or educate, becomes tedious and the person's sarcasm is really about the fact that he ha he's repeating the same, <laughs> you know, cautions or whatever. So I, I think I, I'll think about that. I don't really know what to say because um, I basically just try to go with the flow. I'm not trying to say I'm being passive, but I think that the same person I'm talking about is also waking up to some things and maybe paying attention to who, how he's developing himself as a leader. So I appreciate that part that, that, that he's sharing that and thinking, well, maybe he was going to wake up to the fact that his leadership tone can change for the better, you know? So thank you. Well, I'm going to think too, because y'all's conversation made me think about the whole colors and sarcasm, because I'm, I'm one that I don't respond well to, to sarcasm, but I'm also one that um, I'm kind of quick on my feet. So I'll take the sarcasm and come back with a witty, passive, aggressive way to check them and they realize, let's get it together, right? So, <laughs> but that's just, I mean, most people probably aren't comfortable being that way either, but I'll do it in quickness. But it, it made me think also, um, of the importance of the dichotomy between leadership and, and leaders and followers. I mean, quite honestly, if I'm sorry, if you hear my dogs clickly clacking across the floor, um, if, um, on, baby. if, um, what was I saying? Oh, there's like a partnership in, in, in followers and leaders, right? So there are a lot of times that there are followers that don't want to do anything, but, lead because they think leadership is the spotlight. So they're seeking the spotlight period. So I think it's important too to understand, like you, every, everybody must understand their role. And even as a follower, you have a big stake in, um, somebody was saying that, um, in the power that the leader has. And a lot of times people don't even embrace, embrace that. I'm one of those people that tends to look at the dichotomy of the situation and, and um, decide where I'm going to fit in. Yeah, based on that and and I think a lot, a lot of people just kind of overlook that you know what I'm saying does that make sense what I'm saying well I was going to just now jump out against what you were saying because I hate to say this but without the followers the leader has nothing so and if the leader is a good follower himself he will learn and know how to get the people to follow because he's been a follower and he'll lead by that example or she, or whoever it is, I'm not trying to, but that's, I think, is part of the key, is to understand, and I think a lot of reason why people like the leader thing is because they feel that, oh, well, it comes with all the trappings, whereas that's really not where it's at. It's in being the servant, and doing, and doing, and giving of yourself, and sharing that, um, freely opening with no respect or expectation of anything really back and that's when you find you get tenfold back um or at least that's what i found um in some of the things where i've truly you know gone with the you know that servant and following heart um rather than because i like i'll admit i like the i like the i like the acknowledgement of you know being like the leader, but I don't like the spotlight just shown on me, just, you know, just to show it on me. It's like, I'd rather, you know, have a reason behind it. I'd rather, you know, be behind and, you know, do the stuff behind and have it be of more value than being in the spotlight, even though I like the spotlight. It's kind of weird how my brain works, but um, I don't know if there's other people like that, you know, like, that but that's kind of how it works is a lot of times when people will say oh well you know you did a great job or you should be doing this or you should be doing that I just kind of deflect it you know and but the people I like in the leadership positions I like them because of how they lead because they can follow so I think that's interesting like in in our little group here at I'm sure we have a whole bunch of different personality types in there and everything. You, you have a point. I don't know. Um, I, I would say that we have people in here that probably tend to be more followers, but always find themselves 
ascending to a leadership position as well. Like, that's an interesting concept, Dan, I agree. And excuse me, um, my puppy who needs a haircut is like trying to steal the one right here. But mama, I just want some love from you. Yeah, your puppy's doing a good job there, Christina. <laughs> What's your dog's name? This one's name is Sydney, and Gabby is clickety clacking around here too. <laughs> is Sydney the leader? No, he's definitely not the leader. <laughs> he is just whatever whatever is happening in the world, just hold me and love me, and I really don't care what else is going on. The leader is getting her a bite to eat right now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I like the idea of of of, of being a follower or, or that, that, that a person learns and shows by example, because I've had, I have had a, a number of different teachers and, and, and some of them, and some of them are f friends that have, you know, not necessarily a position at all. So that's what I find interesting is it's not necessarily in a position or, but sometimes it is, but sometimes they've, gotten it not the a lot of the people that i respect the most have not gotten their position through outward adoration or having tons of followers they're like people who show up or are sometimes very good at what they do and sometimes very few people know about them or sometimes maybe i'm i'm one of the few people who recognizes them for what they do but they're leaders to me like some of you guys I, don't, I think it all depends on the situation too. I mean, I'm probably more often a, a leader kind of role, although I don't really, um, and I think, and I don't really try to achieve that position, but I think because of my approach with, you know, my, I have, I just, whatever situation I'm in, I have a very community approach and I'm always, you know, um, very focused on building up people and, and, um, and um, you know, being a trustworthy person, I think people naturally push you in a, a leader, leader position um, given certain qualities. So I, I, I totally get what you're saying. I'm wondering, though, in the broader sense of like in our, our lives, um, how it is that we can probably achieve that a little bit better or leadership uh, a little bit better and I, I think it's important to understand like the characteristics of followers and the characteristics of good leaders good followers and good leaders don't you guys okay so a good leader definitely shows by example i think a good leader should have some amount of humility humility's got to be a part of it you know, if a person's just totally off in their own ego and they never connect with anyone. However, sometimes that's an interesting aspect of leadership. Sometimes a person will lead with their ego and be way out in front of all these people. But sometimes that is the attribute of someone who is not a good leader. You know, they'll, they'll, they're not connecting with anyone. They do their own thing. Their hair flies in the wind. <laughs> but whatever, you know. But So, yeah, I, I think the attributes are really important, you know. That's it. I was going to say that um, when you talk about leaders and followers, I think many followers are leaders but they don't, they're not acting as the leader in a certain group or organization or setting or situation. And I think leaders should realize that they, they want to impart uh, leadership abilities, if that's what a follower needs to learn so that they can become leaders. And I think that by being that way, where that, yes, maybe there's one so-called leader, designated leader because of, 
however it came about, either they created the team first or, you know, they've been selected as a leader. You know, however, however it comes about, I, I think that the followers give the leaders the so-called power, you know, the, the role, the responsibility, uh, the so-called title. And yet the leader needs all the followers, not just to be followers as in a negative, passive, weak way, but to be the best followers that they can be, meaning they're truly at heart, the followers are really leaders or leaders in the making or, or followers are learning leadership qualities because that way we're all, the whole, the whole organization is, is much stronger. Um, you know, followers can be leaders in a sense of making sure that all the small details are taken care of and to help support the leader. So it goes back to my sense of, you know, we are one, you know, we're all one. Uh, we're not successful because we happen to have one person who's the so-called leader. Uh, and and the idea of the, of the power to the leader is really coming from everyone. Um, being given the power. Uh, I think that's really important. And, and then in that sense, the, the leader is a servant. And maybe that's, as I'm sharing right now, I'm thinking that's probably the healthiest way to have leaders and followers is with all those dynamics going on. And I think that's truly what we need in this world also. Um, I keep hearing, uh, well, I, I go, goes back to my feeling that everybody is important, that we're so each individual is really truly powerful as beings, the power within us. And every single one of us is important to, to the kind of world we have. You know, we can't just be followers. We can't just be passive. We're, we're participants in our own lives, in our, in our world, in our you know, near environment. So in that sense, we're, we're really powerful and we're leaders. And yet, if we all work together for a higher good, for something meaningful and important, think of what we can create. And I guess that's, that's the most beautiful ideal I can have for our world today. And we need that to happen today. You know, we need that to people to wake up and, um, and be, in that sense, that level of a follower, that level of a leader with with being awake to who we are and what's going on around us and what's needed. So thank you for letting me share. Yeah, absolutely, Marjorie. You know, it, may, it was making me think, you know, I mean, a great leader is somebody who encourages the people who are in his care to become the best version of themselves, to become the, to reach their highest potential in the organization or in your group or whatever it is you're, you're working on. And, you know, it's just like in this passage that Wayne, Wayne is talking about, he's talking about, um, you know, rivers and streams and the ocean and all of that. And he says, you know, the, even the tiniest stream, if left alone, can carve out a huge valley, like the Colorado River, right? And, you know, but it eventually it flows to the ocean. And, you know, I think it's interesting that a lot of organizations are now leaning towards these um, little think tank groups of leadership within themselves where they're developing new ways of being an organization rather than just having one person telling everybody what to do as they have all these little groups within the organization that are working as a team to accomplish even greater things. And I think that that is just absolutely amazing that they're encouraging more independent thinking within the workplace than what used to be. Because it used to be it was all this fear that your workers are going to come up with some better idea than what you have yourself. And that was going to outdo you somehow, rather than looking at the big picture and saying, you know, what can we accomplish as a company? How can these individual groups use their abilities to come up with the most amazing things and and i think that that is the way that the, the whole world where moves forward is when we encourage each other to be greater than we think we are versus smishing people down and telling them to stay in line and follow and you know so yeah i was trying to find the word a minute ago like i could i was 
couldn't find the word and you said it, think tank. That's exactly it. I think that approach just in, in general, I, I think we're seeing that with in, in the political movement with, you know, all the demonstrations and, and even today having people, you know, marching on Earth Day for science and, and STEM and it's, uh, it's probably that approach maybe that's going to get people more reinvigorated just in, in general in understanding every one of us have a stake in how this world goes around, you know, how our country's operated and how our children are going to be affected in the future. Like, and, uh, and hopefully um, this more think tank like approach is going to, to maybe be like an open arm and embrace people, encourage people to, to start to participate again. That's, I'm praying for that too. I was thinking about leaders and how it is a huge responsibility, a lot of work. Um, you know, leaders can get stressed out and I was thinking that's why the more evolved way of a group, you know, with the more evolved leader, more evolved followers is so that the leader doesn't feel that huge pressure and get and gets burnt out. And, and that's the value of looking at your your group and thinking of each person truly as being uh, potential leaders and having qualities that can be uh, supported so that they become stronger and and in that sense you know the leader is not maybe that was looking thinking gosh you guys are coming up with so many great thoughts on leadership and it's so wonderful to see like all the different perspectives and eye-opening as well um, because it makes me realize how many different types of leaders there are and uh, also that uh, you know each of us are already leaders uh, with our own within our own you know community or with our own uh, groups and um, you know it's just a matter of recognizing when uh, it's the right moment when we're able to kind of step into our, our power to to be that, um, to be that leader, to be that encouragement, or uh, give that those uh, empower empowering um, uh, thoughts and ideas, um, and uh, you know, you made me really think about um, how the qualities of a leadership can vary, of, of different leaders can vary, um, and how it's not just the leader uh, herself or himself, but the the, the vision of the leader and how well that is aligned with the group as a whole. Um, you know, there's so many, there's so many good points you guys came up with, and uh, uh, you know, I was hesitant to even even hop out, but I really appreciate everything you all said, and uh, you really got me thinking today. Thanks a lot. Um, this is Marjorie, and I, I don't know if I. I thought I was speaking, but I think I was muted, so I'm not really sure. I hope I'm not repeating myself. I was just thinking about the verse and looking at the word heaviness. I'm trying to find the verse again to make sure I'm speaking about it. Um, that thus it is that when a sage stands above the people, they do not feel the heaviness of his weight. Um, so what I what I was saying, I'm not sure if it was it was actually heard is that the leaders can get can get tired of their responsibility it's a lot of work it's 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 a lot of pressure it's a lot of stress i think as a group as the so called followers that we can all help support the leader by being in a sense leaders ourselves you know there may be that one leader or the acknowledged leader but each one of each one of the followers truly is like a leader in the making and can 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 take leadership responsibilities on themselves. You know, may not be as the outright open top leader, but a leader in just making sure things get done the right way, or or that things happen the way the the group plans. And I think in that sense, uh, it, that's a much more evolved way of 
of having a leader and, and a more evolved way of being a follower because you're not really a follower you know uh, anyone can be a leader <laughs> I, I don't like like the idea that 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 followers get labeled as followers because truly you know you're actually as a follower being a leader when you give the leader the space to be the leader instead of competing in a sort of egotistic way let the leader be the leader you know um not be passive aggressive about you know I'd rather be a f leader, but I'm a follower right now and having any struggles within the group. Um, I, think that's, I think that's a highly evolved follower. So power to the followers, you know, respect to the followers um, because they know that a group needs a leader. So they let the leader be the leader, but, but, but they're secretly as followers supporting the, the leader by being, you know, followers, you know, taking care of all the things that a a leader cannot take care of um, and in that sense it's like the whole group has no ego not just the leader not having an ego uh, not, not just the leader needing to be humble but the whole group has to be humble the whole, all the followers have to be humble um, so hope that helps yes it's been an awesome discussion Jason so thank you for letting me share I think that's a good point that you bring up, Marjorie, and it uh, kind of uh, it brings that word fear out there. And you know, I think that a lot of times when we are, you know, uh, worried about the person who's in charge, or maybe we're worried about a coworker, we, you know, we're, we feel like we're in competition with them. It's because there's that fear that somehow we're going to be seen as less or we're not going to be appreciated as much or you know we think that um, our work isn't going to count as much as somebody else's and I like what you said about you know just being that support for your organization and that <clears throat> you know we let go of that fear of being thought of as less or um, you know, we let go of that fear that someone's going to get one over on us and we just focus on being the support for our organization and that I think that's what's meant by, you know, you've got to be a follower before you can truly be a leader because you have to see the bigger picture. You have to be going after that bigger picture rather than feeling like you're in competition with everybody that you're working with. You know, a lot of times, <clears throat> it's like in, in my work environment, I have we have a lot of people that work there and everybody has a different kind of personality and and sometimes you know you'll be working with somebody who is is a is a hard worker and they they know what needs to be done and they want to start telling everybody else what to do because they know that needs to get done and if you also are a person who has that kind of a, a go-getter attitude is that then you can almost feel like you're butting heads with that person because they're trying to tell you what to do but if you look at everything as a big picture and you're like look i'm just here to support the organization and you just allow that person to you know it's fine i can be told what to do sometimes i don't always have to be the one telling everybody else what to do right i don't always have to know the plan and be the one that sets the pace and blah, 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 blah. i can allow that other person to do it because i know that by being cooperative we get more done than butting heads with that other person, right? <clears throat> oh man, we were at the top of the hour, guys. <clears throat> Share your final thoughts and then we'll wrap up for today. Uh, real quick, I just- I heard from Karen. So Karen, you have to come out at this point. You realize that. <laughs> come on out, Karen. <laughs> I was actually sleeping. <laughs> no. But I did kind of wake, I did kind of come to with a start at that point. Um, it is, I think, a, a great thing that we have talked about this particular verse. I mean, all of these verses, we, we just take so much out from them. But it seems like with this, maybe it's just because we've got so many of us on board today, which is really, really fun and so many different ideas. But... Uh, I wish I could just grab your ear for a minute, Christina, about your dog, because my little poopy here needs a, a little ID. <laughs> We've got kind of, uh, you know, when you have little motherless pups, it's sometimes hard to know where, whence they came. Uh, 
So um, anyway, everyone who's been listening in and staying off camera, it's time for you jump to jump aboard next week so that we can just really have a big, massive uh, mosaic of faces and uh, even more comments. It just makes it so much pissier. Thank you. <laughs> Love you guys. I was going to say, um, yeah, today's uh, topic and what we went over was really interesting. And I think we all kind of understand, uh, understand the idea about in our heads of who we think is a good leader and who we want to be as leaders and stuff like that. And I think, you know, the more we fall back and our followers the naturalness of that will allow us to be the leaders that we are meant to be and can therefore fulfill whatever our destiny down the road is for being that person and being an effective leader to the best of our abilities. Um, I think if we learn that humbleness and stay in that humbleness, that's the key, I think. I just think that um, the conversation really kind of harkens back to being clear on who you are and what your personality is and what your strengths and stuff are. Um, and I suggest a book. I'm trying to pull it up on my Audible here because y'all know I'm not about to read it, right? It has to be read to me, right? <laughs> um, and Sally Hogshead, and she's got a lot of different little templates and stuff that you can get, but um, she's got a book by it's Sally Hogshead, and it's called How the World Sees You. And this is a great book on it, like, and it'll have a little thing in there that you can go and take this little assessment and it lets you know, kind of like your personality types and everything. I think mine came out like, I don't know, I think it was, and it gives you like a primary and a secondary. And I think my primary was like, like power or something. I don't know. It was clear though. That it, let, uh, it let me know that the world sees me as someone who's trustworthy and someone who um, really kind of depends on, you know, I'm very focused on my integrity and things like that. It's important to know things like that, particularly if you are trying to ascend to a leadership position, because that's kind of goes along with, you know, how you're going to interact with people in your leadership style. That's all. Well, I love the verse. I love, um, the calmness of water even though you know i've lived on the ocean and the ocean can be violent the ocean has tremendous power enough power for us to you know make enough electricity for the whole world and we could quit fighting over oil they say that water will be the ultimate fight but um now that we can desalinate seawater i'm not quite sure how that's going to work <laughs> We can just avoid that fight. But, um, you know, the ocean, when I think of the ocean, think of all that it holds. I mean, it holds like so much. And like you said, Marjorie, being a leader, everybody thinks they want to be a leader. But if you actually ever make it, you might change your mind. Because what you see on the stage, people walking across in their suit or they're driving up in their Jag or whatever, that looks sweet. What you don't see is that they're getting maybe an hour, two hours sleep a night because the phone goes off constantly. And when you get off the phone, you have like 85 messages to return and it's crazy. So the ocean or a leader can, you know, they hold a lot and they've got all these people, you know, kind of dripping into them, dripping into them. Every once in a while, they have a tidal wave. <laughs> There's a tsunami that happens, you know. <laughs> I think that um, personally, I, I'm not a born leader. Like, I'm actually very, very comfortable as a follower. What I find, because I got kind of forced into nursing, you know, I was trying to put food on the table for my kids, and I chose nursing as a career. I was trained to take action and lead and tell people what to do you know, to get things done as a nurse. And so what I find myself doing is I sit back and I sit back and I sit back and I kind of wait for somebody to jump out there and lead, <laughs> you 
you know, I'm just waiting. I'm going, okay, somebody's got to do something here, you know, and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and like nobody does it. And then somebody's got to do it. So then I have to jump in there, you know, but it's not necessarily a role that, that I embrace all that much. You know, I don't, I, I, I have enough to do <laughs> without having to do that too, you know? So, um, it's interesting, you know, it's just, and I think as a leader, you have to, the personality colors. I know it comes up. You have to learn how to interact with different people. The fact is everybody's different, but there are, there do seem to be, um, groups of people that tend to respond in certain ways or things, you know, and if you can learn how to speak to people without having that tidal wave happen, <laughs> you know, then you're way ahead of the game. Um, and if you can hold that tidal wave until you get off the phone or the chat with them, <laughs> that's good too. You know, um, there's a lot that a leader holds and knows that, that the streams and tributaries don't have any idea. You know, they don't understand the weight that's on those shoulders or the, the depth of that ocean, you know, and what that, what that ocean holds. Um, it, absolutely. A leader creates more leaders. That's what a leader does. If I'm going to emulate someone, I love the man that wrote this book that we're studying, Dr. Wayne Dyer. I think he was an amazing leader, um, quiet and soft and people followed him because they loved him, not because they had to. And uh, that's the kind of leader I want to be. So thank you guys so much. Great discussion. Anybody else have any final thoughts before we wrap up? Dan, Chris? We lost Jason. Oh, wait, there he is. Is he back? Jason? I saw you trying to jump out there a little bit ago. I thought we lost you. Go back. Oh, you're muted. Still muted. <laughs> there you are. There you there go. You go. Thank you. Uh, thanks for being a leader, Samantha. I appreciate you. Um, yeah, you did lost me. And I, I guess my camera is in, in and out or something. And I have to apologize if I uh, stepped out on the, uh, while Marjorie was speaking. She was kind of fading out a little while back, and I, I thought she was done. Uh, I, I really appreciate you all. I mean, just so many great things you guys are talking about and uh, so many great points. Um, I think one, one thing though I, I wanted to just say is, uh, you know, that about like what uh, Dan was speaking of and Chris, and I believe Christina, even Marjorie are all mentioning about, you know, being a good follower and, and, um, and yes, you want to be a good follower. And I think the, uh, the point of that though is to, um, so that when we choose to, you know, step into the leadership position, we can recall and remember how it was to be a follower. So we can meet the needs of, of the people that are, are, uh, you know, following us or following the vision that we have and, uh, you know, help them along the way so they can get to, you know, the next step of where they want to be. Um, it's not just about, you know, being a good follower and staying in that mode of following. Um, it's, it's, you know, learning and remembering that journey so that, you know, one day when you do have the opportunity to, to lead or even forced in that position to lead, you can, you can be a good leader by remembering that, uh, where you came from, I think. So that's just my two cents. So great to be here again, finally for, <laughs> and, uh, great to see you all. I appreciate you so much and have a great weekend. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, everyone. Oh, this is this is Marjorie. I was just going to say that um, I was listening to Catherine, and the thoughts came up. Uh, the word "humble" has been is in the saying twice, and I think that that's really gratitude. So, as a as a leader, you know what your what you sh I, your power really should, I think, come from you giving out love to your group, to, your, to everyone, to your followers. And in that sense, being grateful for them and the situation and grateful for you being the leader and having the opportunity mm. to lead. And in that sense, the leader is coming from a position of being humble. So there's a lot of 
there's a lot of dynamics going on when you're talking about leaders and followers and, and such. So those are just some, some of my final thoughts as I was listening to everybody share. It, this has been great. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Awesome, guys. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us today. I appreciate all of your insights, and I love learning from each and every one of you. And, and for those of you who are watching, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, click like on this video, share it with anybody you think that would be helpful to. And there's a link below this video where you can jump into our Facebook group and um, add your thoughts, add your opinions and, and all of that. And then if you'd like to join us next week, we get together just about every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. And you can go to zoom.saturdaymorningmastermind.com. Again, that is zoom, Z-O-O-M, dot saturdaymorningmastermind.com. So with that, guys, have a great, awesome, amazing weekend. And we'll see you next week on the Saturday Morning Mastermind. Bye for now.